to welcome in the Lord. Got a nice little rhythm, but feel free to clap if you want. A lot of stories in the Bible talk about strength coming from the worshipers going ahead of the armies of the Lord. And they crossed through the rivers, and those rivers were parted at times. Those rivers were stopped completely. Because when God's plan is in motion, can anything stop it? I can't hear you. No. Amen. Amen. And that river of God is here today. to have you all sit down, but we're going to keep standing because we're going to believe in the Lord for great things, not only this day, but always. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the blessing that is in your name. We thank you for the grace that you give us each and every day. We thank you for the leaders, not only in this community, in this church, but in our counties, in our states, in our world, Lord. We often don't understand 
the inner workings of those that are working on our behalves. But Heavenly Father, you do. And we believe in you above all things. But to you we give praise. In Jesus' name. In this time of desperation, all we know is doubt and fear. And there is only one foundation we believe. We believe. celebration. Uh, Johanna, why don't you come up? I don't want to forget you this time. <coughs> this morning we celebrate all of our graduates, our high school and our, our college graduates, and before we do that, I just wanted to let you know there is a service tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock at the Ministerial Association sponsoring. It's at St. Peter's Church. It's called the Blessing of the Graduates. For those as, as old as I am, uh, it will be a traditional baccalaureate service for our community. It uh, doesn't matter which high school you're from in the area, but come, come support our high school seniors and our seniors as we, as we offer God's blessings upon them, as we will be doing here this morning. Uh, we have a lot of graduates in our midst, and, 
and we celebrate them. We, we would like to recognize first our high school um, graduates, and our high school graduates this year, if, and as your name is called, if you please come forward, uh, Anna Altamirano, uh, she graduated from Brooklyn High School and will be attending Cuyahoga Community College. Uh, Catherine Furman, Westlake High School, attending Purdue University. Lindsay Mumal, North Ridgeville High School, attending University of Mount Union. Sydney Reimer, Midview High School, attending Lewis University. Matthew Williams, North Ridgeville High School, will be attending LCCC. Jack Yeager, uh, North Olmsted High School, attending the Ohio State University. Jack was in 9 o'clock, and I said at least we have one Buckeye who's, who's, going, who's going from the community. And, and Abby Gray is, uh, graduated, has graduated from Canton McKinley High School and will be attending Kent State University. And the first thing I want to do is, is thank you. And Johanna, could you help me give these folks a, these, these gifts? This is a gift, gift from your church. You already have one, I guess, don't you? <laughs> Matthew, on behalf of Fields United Methodist Church, we, we want to give you something that you can take with you, not only throughout your, your career in, in, in education, but beyond that. Uh, that's going to stick with you for a long, long time. And as far as the two of you, uh, I want to let you know that our church has a scholarship fund. And you're more than welcome to donate to that fund. And every year we, we give our, we give our, our students and our, and our high school seniors who have been active in the life of the church, in the Ignite program, and in their community a scholarship. And our, our 2017 scholarship recipients are Catherine Furman and Lindsay Mumal. And so we celebrate them. And just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Matthew, what are you going to be doing after graduation? Well, uh, likely I'm going to LCCC for what I hope to be game design because I'm a techie. Okay. I'm already working the cameras back there. That's so true. If I'm out of the shot, it's probably my fault because I can stand over there. Whatever. But, yeah, something to do with technology. Fantastic. Fantastic. Lindsay. All right, fantastic. I'm going Catherine? to animal science pre-vet. Pre-vet. All right. Well, congratulations to all three of you, and we <coughs> wish you the best of luck. We'll be, we'll be offering a blessing towards the end of the service. And Johanna, you have a gift as well. Each year, the United Methodist Women uh, give a gift in honor of our two th this year and our 2017 high school graduates. And this year, the gift was given to community care here in North Ridgeville. Uh, we, UMW certainly uh, extends our sincere congratulations and blessings on these 2017 high school kids and wish them well in all their future endeavors. Let's give these folks a round of applause. You may be seated. And I'd like to recognize also we have a group of college graduates, and if you would stand um, uh, as your name is read, uh, Joshua Brown uh, graduates from Kent State University, Chuck Collins, University of Phoenix, <laughs> Victoria Elliott, University of Louisville Medical Center, Medical School, I'm sorry, uh, Kimberly Godsey, Louisiana State University, Jake Jones, LCCC. <laughs> Jake, by the way, will be going to uh, Cleveland State University for a, a degree in science? Physics. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Abby Joyce, um, graduate, Malden Wallace University. Kelly Joyce will be graduating, Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine, Heidi Reinhardt, Liberty University, Kylie Spillane, Kent State University, and Travis Spillane, Ohio Technical School. Let's give these folks a round of applause as well. 
You may be seated. It's a lot of hard work, and we celebrate not only those folks, but we also celebrate their, their parents and families as well. I mean, what, a, what an incredible um, gift that they have given their children and, and now adults uh, for this, this gift of an education and support throughout their years, and, and what a blessing it is also to see them go and flourish uh, beyond high school, beyond college, and it is God's gift to them and God's gift to the families and also God's gift to the church as well. So uh, we thank you, uh, families. We thank you, graduates. We thank you, church, for supporting them throughout their years. And so keep these folks in prayer and also uh, celebrate all the gifts that have been given to us and with all the celebrations of family and friends and new beginnings, there are also many things we need to lay lay up uh, upon the Lord because uh, all is not well in many people's lives and in the nation and world as well. So uh, please note those in our prayer list this morning. I have several I need to add to that. If you would please pray for Don Jewel, Don Jewel, for David, for Sandy, for Savannah, for Melanie, for Margaret Truman, who is recovering from knee replacement, and also for Tom. Are there any other concerns or joys of the church here this morning? Pray for my sister Charlene, who's in the hospital. Prayers for Charlene, who's in the hospital. Thank you. Okay, Adrian. Reinhardt's birthday is tomorrow. Well, happy birthday. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So prayers for rich and swift healing. Okay. Anyone else? Boy, Janet, you come back and forth and you're making me work. Prayers for Larry Baker. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, prayers for Tony and his wife. Prayers for Tony. Well, we haven't stopped, Tony. We haven't stopped. Yes. Safe travels for your grandmother who, who's coming to see your game tomorrow. All right. Keep your family in prayer. How does that sound? Okay. All right. Well, let us go to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, as we gather in your house here this morning, what a celebration! a celebration of new beginnings, of incredible adventures, of new opportunities, but especially of your grace, especially of your presence, especially of the eternal gift that you offer to each and every one of us. Lord God, we gather here this morning to give you thanks and praise for your presence with us throughout our years, through our, through our joys, through our anguish, through everything in between, Lord God, we thank you for carrying us, for being with us, for guiding us. Lord God, we thank you that for when we fall, you lift us back up again. Dust off the, the dust of sin from us and redeem us and set us free. 
Lord God, thank you. As we gather here this morning, we give you thanks for all of our graduates and their families. We thank you for Anna and Catherine and Lindsay and, and Sydney and Matthew and Jack and Abby, for Joshua and Chuck and Victoria, for Kimberly and Jake, for Abby and Kelly, for Heidi and Kylie and Travis. Lord God, we thank you for the blessings that they have received from you, and we pray your your continued watch care upon them as they embark upon new exciting adventures in their life. Lord God, keep them safe from harm. Keep them always searching for new horizons. Have them know it, that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. Lord God, we celebrate their families, their parents, who have been with them throughout and will be with them throughout as well, Lord God. Thank you for their perseverance, their love, their concern. They're always being there for them. Bless them as well. Lord God, we, we go a little bit further out and we pray for your world. We pray for the uncertain times that many share. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for our great nation and our national leaders. Lord God, we pray for our civic leaders. Lord, we pray for our schools, our teachers, administrators, support staff. We pray for our students, those who have graduated, but also those who are just going on to yet another year of education. Lord God, bless them mightily. Uh, Lord God, we pray for those who cannot be here, those who are homebound, sick, hospitalized, those are, who are just uncertain about their faith. Lord God, we pray for all those caregivers, the medical community. We pray for first responders. We, we thank you, Lord, for blessing them so richly throughout their days. Lord God, we pray for loved ones that surround their loved ones seven days a week, 24 hours a day with love and care. We pray for them for wisdom and courage and strength in their days. Lord God, we pray for Megan and her baby. We pray for Martin and Haley for Carson and Don and Dave and Sandy, for Charlene, for Ann, for Sandy, for Savannah, for Melanie and Margaret, for Tom, for Tony, for Larry and Rich, for the Hess family, for Jeff, and for all those others, Lord God, that we've lifted up to you in the silence of our heart. Lord God, we pray your watch care upon each and every one. Lord, be with us now as we are inspired by your spirit to do wonderful things for you. Lord God, give us a spirit of joy, a joy that surpasses all understanding of the knowledge that you're with us now as well. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for blessing us this day as we offer our tithes and offerings to you. Amen.
stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before. Today's scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 4. You can find it on page 718 on your, in your pew Bible. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by, the na by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the river, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I, gave, I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your, in your stead, since you are precious and honored in my sight. And I will love you, and I will, I will give men in exchange for you, and people in exchange for your life. Good morning. How are you today? It's raining, but it's warm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a warm rain. It's not chilly, is it? 
and it's a great day to be celebrating graduation, isn't it? Do you know what graduation means? To move on. Really, do you know? Move on to a different class. Emma? To get a new teacher. Mm -hmm. New school supplies. Get a new grade. Yes. What grade are you going into, Lily and Leah? First grade. Uh, Nadia? Fourth grade. Fourth grade, Nico? AJ? What grade are you going to be going? Second? And how are we doing? Where are we at? Second? Fantastic. And Emma, what grade are you going to be in? First grade, Bailey? Second, you're going to be in second grade? All right. How about the people that are graduating from high school? Where do they go? What grade are they going to be in? College? Twelfth again? <laughs> I don't think they wanted to go back to high school. <laughs> and I think the people graduating from college are like, woohoo, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I'm all done right now. <laughs> yes, there are, there's different times for college. You can go different years you can go for a semester it all depends on what you want to do and you can keep going you could be a hundred years old and go right <laughs> so it's fantastic that we have all these new things that are coming up for us right we are finishing we're graduating one thing and moving on to the next thing and is it kind of scary going to something new it might not be but there might be some new people coming to the school, there might be new teachers that we have to learn to get along with. Yeah, Hopefully not. Yet yeah, we're going to, you're going to be in a brand new school here in North Ridgeville if you're going in third through eighth grade. You might get lost, but guess what? There's always hope and there's fantastic things ahead for us. That's okay. But one other thing I want to share with you is what is this picture of? Emma just colored this for me. It's not a, what, a butterfly pie? Is that a pie? What's that? Okay, we have a butterfly. I want you to look way up high, up in the stained glass windows up there, and I want you to see if you can find the butterfly. What color is it? Purple. purple, a purple butterfly. Do you know what the butterfly symbol is? Uh, means? Freedom, freedom, graduation, graduation. <laughs> butterfly is a symbol. Okay, it's my turn. Butterfly is a symbol of new life, new things happening to us, okay? So, we are all butterflies, aren't we? We might be starting a new job. We might be starting a new career. We might be starting a new class. We might be starting, we might be getting all these dif different things happening to us. We are like butterflies, and we're going to all spread our wings and go forward, and with God's help, everything's going to be awesome. It may, you might be scared. There might be things that are happening to you that you don't know why it's happening to you, but like Pastor Tom's going to talk about today, God is always there for us, and we don't have to be afraid, no matter what we do. So let's go spread our wings down to Junior Church and have a great session. Thank you. Thank you. Never guess it was towards the end of school, huh? Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may feel the newness of life, that we may forever feel your presence with us, your guiding arms around us, and your spirit to move us. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, 
the 13th verse, but I just wanted to start a few verses before that to give you a little idea where Paul's going with this. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, now that at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This morning, we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that gives us incredible strength Incredible power, incredible determination. We give thanks to God for being with us. And we also celebrate our graduates, those from high school, those from college. We celebrate their, 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 their great um, achievements and also their families because their families were behind them and supported them and loved them, and, and they'll keep on doing that, I, I guarantee it. So this morning we celebrate many things. We celebrate God first and foremost, and we celebrate the gifts that God has given to those among us, some of them amazing gifts. So graduation is a time of new beginnings for graduates and new beginnings for parents as well. I mean, some will, this will be the first time uh, their, their child has gone off to school and might be a little more quiet than it was before at home. For others, been through it before, but still a little more quiet as well. And, and so we, we know that there will be struggles and joys along that transition as well. As a church, we also begin a new journey because many of those that will be going to school won't be in our midst and active, but our prayers will turn to them even more fully as they go about their, their new beginnings and in faith and also new beginnings in, in academia or, or in, in their employment or whatever it might be. So we as church continue to surround these folks that we lift up today. Education is an amazing thing. It is a gift. It sets us upon an adventure of continued learning and experiencing life in all different ways. As I was preparing this message for Sunday, many things were going through my head, but the word adventure kept coming to me because it is. An adventure to me is an exciting time. You know, there might be some unknowns along the way, but it's an exciting time. If the Spirit-led time, it's a, it's a joyous time. It's a joy of a whole lot of fun. At the same time, well, you know, a whole lot of challenges too. But education brings many things. Philosopher John Ruskin once said, the entire object of true education is to make people not merely do the right things, but to enjoy them. Not merely industrious, but to love industry. Not merely learned, but to love knowledge. Not merely pure, but to love purity. Not merely just, but to hunger and thirst for justice. In other words, education brings this passion alive. When we, when we study something we are deeply passionate about, we want to make sure we do the best we can, and we'll go to the ends of the earth to accomplish whatever task that may be before us. Passion is, is what it takes to go into any industry, any profession, on uh, any career path. It takes the passion for doing what we are doing and the education and, and the skills behind it that God has given. More importantly, God has given us the gift of faith. And that is God's love, which is God's passion. And so along with education comes faith. We need to have the passion of God in our souls to continue forward to understand that all the gifts that we have are from God and to be able to experience and live grace, mercy, forgiveness, sharing these things with the world around us. All of that sounds good, but here's the reality. Graduations 
sometimes represent uncharted territory. No matter how many degrees, in-services, classes, studies, graduation represents new challenges as well as new opportunities, seeing life in a wholly different and new way. It's exciting, but sometimes we start thinking, have we made the right decision? Are we going down the right path? We have this uncertainty about us every once in a while when we are in that territory which we have never found ourselves a part of, and we wonder, where am I going to gain the strength? Sometimes there is loneliness. Sometimes there is a feeling of hopelessness as this new adventure unfolds. God knows life every once in a while can be a challenge at the very least. But here's the deal. And this is what Paul was talking about when, when he says that I have learned the secret of having plenty, of having little, of being hungry and being well fed. Here's the secret. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will be able to do all things through him that strengthens you. That is the secret. That's all there is to it. If we give ourselves to Christ, if we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can do all things, no matter what uncharted territory we find ourselves in. Whichever way the river is running, we're going to be able to beat it. You see, we can do all things through God who strengthens us. For God has called us by name has been with us from the time we were conceived to guide us, to enlighten us. We have been called by name. Just a reminder to those seeking new adventures as graduates to know that God is with you, knows your name, knows your life intimately. recognizes that life is not always that easy, not always that simple. But on your new adventure, you will never be alone. I was thinking, some may think God expects us to be puppets. God does not. God doesn't want us to simply follow a set of rules for life. God's a whole lot different than that. Education, there are some specific things you have to do. I was helped by and tutored by my dad, the, the engineer, that said memorize the multiplication tables, the addition tables, subtraction tables. Mul uh, memorize the, the, the table of the elements. Memorize all that stuff as a foundation, and then you can build on from there. But, but God's not asking us to do all that stuff. God's just asking us to accept God into our lives and to know the boundless love of God. Because when God calls us by name, and God does, even when we pass through the rivers of life, and they start rising, we will not be overcome. And the fire, when they start raging, will not consume us. Because listen to what God said in Isaiah. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One. You are precious in my sight, honored, and I love you. Imagine the creator of the universe finds you precious in God's sight. You are honored in God's sight, and God loves you. Not just when you're good, not just when you get an A or a B or a C or wherever your boundary is there, but all the time, 
not just exam time or interview time or downtime or uptime or hospital time, but all the time. God loves you, and you are precious in God's sight, and you are loved. And you will never be alone. One of my favorite stories from Martin Luther King was shared in a, story, in a book that he wrote called On the Mountaintop. About the phone ringing, death threats received all night long. Nothing could relieve his fear that night. He paced. He thought about the theology that he had learned. He couldn't call his dad. He couldn't call his mom. In his mind, he knew he needed to call on the one his daddy used to preach about. You see, Dr. King was a third generation preacher. He needed to call on the one his daddy used to preach about. Power that can make a way out of no way. The church, having so much his home all his young life, he never stepped out far enough or bold enough to forge his own relationship with God, and that is so incredibly important. Dr. King discovered his faith became real to him that night, not merely as a hand-me-down business of the family. He remembered his prayer. He prayed, Lord, I am trying to do what is right, but I am losing my courage. I am afraid. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. And he heard his Lord speak to him and promised to never leave him alone. Never alone. Dr. King would write, No, never alone. My Lord promised me that he will never leave me alone. That is the gift. The secret, if you will. Graduates, friends, family, church. That is the secret that God offers to us. We can't see it. We can't touch it. But by faith we know that it is there. Because the God of the ages, which gives us courage to affirm that I can do all things through him who strengthens me is with us during all of our times. God will give you the strength will give you the wisdom, will give you the peace to do all things, no matter how difficult the circumstance. You see, everything that you have is a gift from God. The blessings you think you have, the blessings you have not seen, are still gifts from God. You have a foundation that will never let you down. Your family taught you that from a young age. Your church has still affirmed that week in, week out, day in, day out. So go be convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things above or things below nor anything else in this world will ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus, no matter where your path takes you. Jesus is your rock, your strength, your hope, your calm in the midst of the storm. You have gifts. They've been given to you by God. Whether you believe that or not, God has given you everything you have. Everything. That's what we celebrate. Period. That's what all the shouting's about. That's what all the celebration's about. That's what all the partying is about. Sorry, parents, I don't mind partying, non-alcoholic. 
Partying's good for the Lord. Celebration of the Lord. It's joy. That's what God is offering. It's the joy of knowing that God is with you always, even to the end of the age. That's what it's all about. So put God through our risen Savior at the very core of your being and understand that all strength and courage you need comes from the Lord, especially at times such as these. You see, the true celebration of graduation season is the presence of God, which has been with you throughout your journey and will be especially with you on the new journeys that lie ahead. By faith, mountains are moved and dreams are achieved because you can do all things through him who strengthens you. Make that part of your daily prayer life and your everyday walk. You have been immensely blessed. Keep the Lord at your core. And may you have a mind given to you by God that sees beyond any present reality not adapting to the present reality, but be able to contribute to what is to come. And most importantly, have an enduring faith. Keep the faith. Never forget that God is with you always, even to the end of the age. A faith that assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen, I'll say it again, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Have fun. Enjoy the ride. Remember on this journey of yours, whether graduates, parents, friends, family, church, you are not alone. You will never be alone that Jesus will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now at this point, I'd like to have all the graduates, high school and college, stand up, if you will. And you see where they're at? If you would gather around them, church, and lay hands on them, I want to offer a blessing. I think there's enough graduates to go around. If not, that's all right. We'll double up, triple up, quadruple up. Here comes some more. Then, yeah, we, uh, we, we go across the aisles here at this church. We're, <laughs> we're not going to go there. Let us pray. Eternal God, bless our graduates and their families this day. May they come to know you even more completely, celebrating and witnessing the joy that comes from you. Let them know that they can do all things through you, who strengthens them for the adventures that are unfolding. Be with them with every step and support them when their legs are weak. O oh, Trinity of love and power, protect them wheresoever they go. Hold their families and friends in our church, in your endless grace. Offer them wisdom, peace, and courage as they face new beginnings. Lord, may our graduates find you in their midst at all times, forever shining the light of your redeeming grace upon their lives. May they continue to grow steadfast in faith, forgiving in spirit, and gracious in living. In Jesus' name. Amen. Chuck, you want everybody to keep standing? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're ready to rock and roll. Your favorite song, Chuck? <laughs> Days of Elijah, you like that song? I do. Mm -hmm. Can I share this Sure. One? Janet's going to sing with Big us. Cut. Janet's back. <laughs> All right. You know, it was funny when um, Tom was talking about life's an adventure and 
This is one of the gifts. I, I didn't catch if you mentioned what was in the bag, but this is one of the gifts that was in the bag that they gave the graduates. Um, Bible. I mean, what better gift is that? Amen? Amen. And this is a particular translation, the message. And, you know, Tom, when you said life's an adventure, this puts it in an adventure context because it, it, it paraphrases the word. It makes it that much more real to you. Um, so many people are intimidated by translations of the Bible, and they need not be that way because God reaches us at our point of need. Amen? Amen. Amen. And what were you all doing? Oh, we got a beat, Tom. We got a beat. That's better. Jubilee, for out of Zion till salvation comes. 